I've not been dragged by John to an undisclosed location here in Putrajaya to check out Hyundai's third electric vehicle in Malaysia. The first was the Hyundai Kona EV, the second was the Ioniq 5, and today we have the Ioniq 6. And unlike the Mercedes-Benz EQE 350+, Plus, the Ioniq 6 is a car you would want to be seen in. Hyundai offers this in two variants, the high-spec all-wheel drive model which goes for 320,000 ringgit and the rear-wheel drive low-spec model which goes for 290,000 ringgit. Behind me is the rear-wheel drive model in blue... What was it again? Huh? Biophilic blue pearl or as Lokman calls it, black. So, let's go check it out. This rear-wheel drive variant has a range of up to 614 kilometers. That makes it the cheapest EV you can buy in Malaysia with the longest range. For comparison, the Mercedes-Benz EQE 350 Plus has a range of 669 kilometers, but that car costs 420,000 ringgit. Even the Tesla Model Y loses out on range when compared to the Ioniq 6. That range comes courtesy of its low drag coefficient of 0.21. The rear-wheel drive variant of the Hyundai Ioniq 6 comes with a 228 horsepower electric motor with 350 newton meters of torque. That is enough to get this car from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.4 seconds up to a top speed of 185 kilometers an hour. With its 800 volt architecture, the Hyundai Ioniq 6 takes 18 minutes to get from 20% to 80% charge on a 350 kilowatt charger. As for AC charging, well, this car supports up to 11 kilowatts, which can take the car from 0 to 100% in 7.1 hours. But really, Hyundai, 11 kilowatts AC charger? I mean, a Renault Zoe, which is much cheaper, has a 22 kilowatt onboard AC charger. The Hyundai Ioniq 6 also supports vehicle to load or V2L, which can support a maximum output of 3.6 kilowatts. Design-wise, where the Ioniq 5 took inspiration from the past, the Ioniq 6 takes inspiration from the future with a sleek, curvy and minimalist design. Well, the front at least. Here's a fun fact. Since there's no grill on the car to give its identity, Hyundai is using the lighting system to give the car its identity. So, just like on the Ioniq 5, the Ioniq 6 also features lighting systems with the parametric pixel design. You get full LED headlights on the front with the welcome and goodbye function when you unlock and lock the car. Overall, I think the car has a really clean design and dare I say, handsome? But here at the back, well, it's a mixed bag. It feels like the front and back were designed by two different groups of Gen Zs. It gets a little boxy and a lot messy fast with this ducktail spoiler, this vertical lights down here and this full width rear tail lights. Lovey says the back of this car looks like the Porsche Taycan. But what does she know about design anyways? On this rear wheel drive variant, you get 18 inch alloy rims. Before we get in, I just want to talk about the key fob. It's a bit too futuristic looking for its own good. It looks like, it looks like a key fob that Dr. Robotnik will use to activate one of his machines. The cabin of the Ionic 6 is a really nice place to be in. To me, it feels calming and relaxing. The dashboard has a clean and understated look. The Ionic 6 also features two side-by-side -side displays that include a 12.3-inch instrument cluster along another 12.3-inch infotainment touchscreen. At the bottom here, we have a set of physical buttons which includes a customizable shortcut key and a physical volume dial. Below that is your climate control which is touch-based but at least common functions like the temperature and fan speed can be controlled without going through the infotainment system. If you want to access more settings like the seat ventilation, you will need to go into the infotainment system. Moving on to the center console, you get a Qi wireless charger here, a USB-A port for your wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto, a couple of cup holders, and this, this I appreciate Hyundai for. You get your window controls and your central locking here on the center console. So, Every passenger in the car can easily access all these controls. Also, you get a huge storage compartment underneath the center console here where you can put, I don't know, whatever your imagination takes you. But now you might be asking, hey, where is the drive mode selector or the drive selector? Well, 
it's on the stock here, which Mercedes-Benz drivers will be familiar with. As for the steering wheel itself, you get the usual multifunction features and the drive mode selector. But here's the cool feature of the steering wheel. Instead of the Hyundai emblem, you get these four LED pixel lights. These are interactive lights that indicate different ongoing functions of the car, such as the welcome and goodbye animation, when the voice assistant is listening, which drive mode is selected, and the all-important battery charge status. Another fun fact, the four dots means H in Morse code. One other cool thing is that you get aluminium pedals with a plus and minus symbol. Nice sense of humor from Hyundai. As for the seats, well, they're kind of plain and simple, but they do have a cooling feature, which is a god sand in this hot weather. But more than that, these two front seats come with something called a relaxation mode. So in this mode, you press a button and the seat will automatically move behind and recline to give you a more comfortable seating position where you can just relax and listen to audio through the eight speaker Bose premium sound system. And then when it's time to get back up, time to go back upright, you click the button again and the seats will recline back up and move forward. You also get ambient light strips on the top and lower part of the dashboard and on the door cards. You can choose from a list of preset colors or you can choose from a list of 64 different single tone colors. Here at the back, well, for starters, you get the same material design and selection as you get on the front door card. I am 180 centimeters tall. And as you can see, I am really not that comfortable back here. The bench is so close to the floor that it feels the, the squatting feeling is really strong here. And headroom is just about enough. My hair is already brushing on the ceiling. You get two uh, icon vents at the back, but you know, they would have been better if they were on the pillar instead. Uh, there's really not much space to slot your feet underneath the front, underneath the seats. But for this car, you do get the boss controls. So if you require more legroom, which is, I mean, these seats are already pushed all the way to the back and see the amount of legroom, uh, the room I have. But in case you need more, you can always push the front seat forwards as long as nobody is sitting on the seats. And holy cannoli, look at that. Just like the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 6 also features Smart Parking Assist 2, where you can move the car backwards and forwards using the key fob. All you need to do is lock the car and then quickly press the engine start button. Once the car starts up, all you need to do is use these side buttons here to move the car forwards or backwards. Take some time. But let me assure you, the car will move forward. A few moments later, I swear to God, Lokman and I witnessed the car moving by itself. Move forwards. And you can move it backwards. Magic. So, that's the end of the future tour of the Hyundai Ioniq 6. I kind of like this car. All the niggles I have with the car are balanced out by all the cool features. If the Jaguar I-Pace didn't exist, this would be the EV that I would buy. Anyway, thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment and share. Is that how it goes? Sure, whatever. To show your support for us. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go find not John to get them to take me back to the office so I can catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.